So one of the things that we can't tell inside of our PDF or Swift export is that that text is actually clickable. So we're going to want to create a style that's going to indicate to our users that you can actually click on that content. So let's close our PDF file. Let's go back to InDesign. So what we're going to do is create a style and then apply that style into our document. So let's just select the word welcome. Let's work on our style a little bit. In my control bar, let's come over to the character styles. Let's come down here and let's choose this gold color we have in the color panel as well. With that selected, let's come over to the character styles. Let's open that up. Let's hold the option key and create a new character style. And this character style we're going to call link. Character color, it's going to pick up the color we have currently selected. Let's come over to underline options. Let's turn on underline. Let's set the weight to one pixel. It's going to be solid. The offset is going to be one pixel. The color is going to be the text color. We can choose preview to see what this is going to look like. And then click OK. With welcome selected, let's come over here and click on the link. Character style. Let's click away and see what the style looks like. So this is a new character style we've just created. So what I'm going to do is select none. We basically just colored welcome and assigned a character style to that just so we could see what it would look like. But what we want to do is instead of us having to manually go in here and create that link style for every one of the table of contents, we're going to use a technique called the nested style. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook the nested style into our table of contents body style. And we're going to let InDesign automatically generate the underlines for whatever the links are. This way, every time we generate a table of contents, InDesign will automatically give us yellow underlined type for all of the interactive elements in there. And they're interactive again when we export out to PDF or Swift because we can actually roll over and click on them. So again, we have the character link style here. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. Let's move this up. What we're going to do is go into the paragraph styles. Let's open up the TOC body. And inside table of contents body, I'm going to move this so you guys can see what's happening. Let's come down to drop caps and nested styles. And let's say I want to create a new nested style. Let's click on preview. And I'm going to move my document in the background to the side so we can see what's happening. So what we're going to do is select the nested style and we're going to nest in, you can only nest character styles within a paragraph style. We're going to choose link. We're going to say, notice how automatically through one of the words, notice that each one of the first words of these items now has that nested style assigned into it. We're going to say, apply that style up to one and then I'm going to click on words and in here I'm going to come down and choose a tab character. I'll move this out of the way and then when InDesign updates notice that now we have our linked character style being assigned to the paragraph style only up to the point where we have a tab character. Then we have our leader and then our number all the way at the end. All of this content again being automatically generated by InDesign but our nested style is allowing us to indicate to our users that they can actually click on each one of these items. And again, the real power here is that InDesign is doing this work for us. We set up